Uh, Christopher Cook is my name. Uh, I, I made a promise to my board that uh, when external interest was big enough from uh, institutional investors and potential customers that I would go over from uh, Swedish to English, and which is the case now, which is sooner than I anticipated in the company, but that should be regarded as a positive thing from an investor standpoint, definitely. Um, what I want to do today is provide an update of uh, where the company is heading, uh, what have we done thus far, uh, just to provide a, a bit of information about how to value certain activities in the company. And I think that's important from an investor standpoint. Uh, the listing went very well. I think we were 450% plus oversubscribed and uh, we brought in about 950 new investors. So I'm very happy about that. And those who are investors in the company, uh, I certainly welcome your interest in the company. If we look at sort of the, the uh, history of the company, it hasn't been around very long. Uh, the company started out in uh, 2014, but my journey with the company started before that. Uh, I think it was around 2012, it was a point of self-reflection that I had. Uh, my, my father had passed away recently due to complications of diabetes and Alzheimer's. My mother uh, got cancer, thank God she survived the cancer. But at that point of time, it was a, a point of saying what have I done and where I want to go. And in a very serendipitous fashion, I met uh, Peter Falk, Dr. Peter Falk, who's joining me today and is the CSO of the company as well. And in the fall of 2014, we started uh, uh, Carbiotics based upon Peter's PhD research. And what Peter told me is he had a fiber that was up to 10 times better, a prebiotic, than those fibers that market. Wonderful. And I'll try and explain in the presentation why that's the case. Uh, so we went into Venture Cup, we won Venture Cup, uh, then we went out of sort of stealth mode and were ranked as the top or second best new ingredient in 2015. But we knew that we had to, if we we're gonna be successful in the therapeutic space, develop a diagnostic tool. So in combination with building up this process to produce this new, very interesting ingredient, we built a diagnostic platform. And then we took that data these 3,000 data points and started developing therapeutic products. And in 2019, this year, we listed the company, taking that history of having a very potential high profile uh, uh, soluble fiber product, a very unique diagnostics platform, and uh, a very good start to developing therapeutics products as well. Uh, to explain this, uh, we produced a short film and I think it gives a good overview of our, of our position and where we're heading. Det mänskliga mikrobiomet är samspelet av mer än 30 biljoner mikrober som producerar viktiga metaboliter som är väsentliga för människors hälsa och välbefinnande. Många utbredda kroniska sjukdomar som hjärt-kärlsjukdomar, IBD, typ 2-diabetes, neurologiska sjukdomar som Alzheimers och vissa cancerformer har stark koppling till för låg produktion av metaboliter i magens naturliga tarmflora som huvudsakligen kommer från nedbrytning av vattenlösliga fibrer i magtarmkanalen. Mikrobiomet öppnar på så vis ett helt nytt sätt att behandla dessa sjukdomar. Carbiotix utvecklar produkter och läkemedel som ökar produktionen av metaboliter från tarmen för att bromsa den stigande kurvan för metabola och kroniska sjukdomar till nytta för många människor och med stor marknadspotential. Nyckeln är ny kunskap om hur fiber kan användas för att ändra balansen mellan olika bakteriestammar i tarmen och styra sammansättningen av olika metaboliter. Bolagets egenutvecklade fiber, Carbiotix Axos, ett andra generationens fibertillskott, ger en unik fördel jämt mot konkurrenterna på marknaden, tack vare en hög metabolitproduktion samt mycket kostnadseffektiv tillverkningsprocess. Carbiotix verksamhet bedrivs idag i tre ben. Egen läkemedelsutveckling, kopplad till metabola och kroniska sjukdomar. I nuläget hyperammonemi och ulcerös kolit. Vidareutveckling av det prebiotiska fibret Carbiotix Axos till fler användningsområden, inte minst inom livsmedelsindustrin. Samt försäljning av ett kostnadseffektivt konsumenttest för att mäta och övervaka tarmhälsan.
I hope that gave a, a good overview of what we're doing. I think one of the key takeaways from this presentation is the fact that uh, the therapeutic development platform we have is actually a platform. And therefore, what we are doing is targeting both primary applications, but also uh, co-treatment applications, which is very important to note. And the logic there is quite simple. Uh, if we can impact the pharmacokinetics of a drug by optimizing or addressing dysbiosis, then we could potentially increase the efficacy of drugs, potentially avoid toxic side products, as well as avoid dysbiosis as a result of taking the drug. So the three clear benefits from a co-treatment perspective, which should make this attractive. And it's stated in the, the memorandum, but maybe not uh, as, uh, as clear as that. But the interesting thing about this is that it is a platform in, uh, therapeutic in the sense that we can cover quite a lot of areas. And quite recently, uh, a press release came out from a company in China, uh, Green Valley uh, Pharmaceuticals, looking at the exact same mechanism that we have in terms of elevating metabolite production and using that as a therapeutic uh, for early stage Alzheimer's, which is uh, quite an interesting development. Um, but if we're going to be introducing fiber into individuals, there are problems. It's just simply you just can't increase the amount of soluble fiber consumption in people's diets. Uh, we know that all people uh, are unable to utilize the fiber uh, as effectively as some people. Uh, we know that the fiber products at market today are not very good. Uh, they're typically first-generation fiber products. And we know that everyone's microbiome is, is in a state of constant flux as well. There's a significant uh, uh, variation, and that's caused by, among other things, diet, exercise, stress, uh, obviously what you're eating, uh, your age, if you have a disease or not. All these things impact. So it doesn't make things easier when you're developing therapeutics against this backdrop. So how do you address that? Well. First of all, you have to understand that this microbiome is in a constant state of flux and it's changing. And we know that the diversity is much higher as an infant and that decreases over time and obviously changes with the onset of different diseases as well. So once you have that understanding, then obviously this justifies the need to do what? To understand what's happening, to diagnose gut health in this case, the balance between good bacteria and, and pathogenic bacteria. So, how do we address this? As the film suggested, we're working primarily with uh, therapeutic development, and then we have a very good active ingredient, and then we also have a diagnostic test, which is there as a competitive advantage for that. So you can say that the company stands on, on three legs right now, but the focus of the, the second and third leg is to provide a competitive advantage for the primary activity of the company, which is producing uh, therapeutic products, as I said, as a platform technology as primary therapeutics, co-treatment alternatives, and uh, potentially even uh, nutraceutical applications. Uh, if we look at the therapeutics we're developing, they're essentially based upon three things. Uh, obviously, this fiber, axis fiber that we're developing, which is based upon Peter's research, is the backbone of all our therapeutic products, saying that we can use other fiber products as well and therefore open up uh, opportunities to work with other companies supplying those fiber products. Uh, isolated uh, bacteria as well, strains, are integrated into these products, and how you formulate them. This is what makes these products unique. If we didn't formulate them in a unique way, we'd be simply a, a nutraceutical, a symbiotic product. And what we want to achieve is essentially is unlocking this metabolic profile in individuals, going from a, a, a disease state to a healthy state which is not easy, and it's done almost, almost on a, a personal basis or a personalized basis. Right now, we've defined two indication areas that we're working with, uh, in, with regards to our therapeutics development. One is hyperanemia, which is essentially an elevated uh, pH in the blood, and the other one is uh, IBD. Uh, we're still at the preclinical phase right now, so we're conducting uh, um, in vivo, in vitro, or in vitro, then in vivo studies. Um, and we won't get into clinicals until the end of next year, phase one clinicals. Um, but again, remember, because we are a platform technology, there are opportunities out there to explore other areas, all right? As I alluded to earlier. So the market shouldn't be surprised 
if we see an opportunity which we can explore in a very cost-effective basis uh, with other parties as well. And that model itself lends itself to bringing in industry participation much, much earlier in the clinical process to offset a lot of these costs as well. It's not a unique model in, the, in this industry, but I think it's a model that leverages the competitive advantage of the technology we have. Right? Because it's a platform technology, it would be a wasted opportunity not to explore multiple areas, bring in industry partners earlier to subsidize the cost of, of clinical studies. And that's typically uh, the way things will proceed as well in the company. Uh, this axis ingredient, which is the foundation of Peter's research, uh, where we're doing enzyme development work and process scale-up work, is actually up to 10 times better, and we conducted uh, in vitro studies quite early on in 2015 and, and 2016 uh, to demonstrate this as well. Um, what's more interesting here is that we can produce this particular fiber at a cost level, which is commensurate or equal with the first generation fibers, which is very interesting indeed. And the market here for the high-end fibers is about a, a, a billion uh, euros. So it's a big market. Uh, the total market's about 60 billion for these types of fibers, crowns. Uh, in terms of our diagnostic tests, uh, we currently have two tests at market, and they're part of our, our first generation ecosystem. Um, a a one-time test and a subscription model as well for about 300 crowns. This test is about one-third the cost of the nearest competitor at market globally. And we're going to hold that metric as well across the board when we launch our, our next generation uh, ecosystem as well. Um, how do we do this? We re-engineered the test. We looked at all components. We didn't simply take off-the-shelf technologies and employ them uh, in a commercial setting. So everything from consumables to how we pack things to how we extract DNA and uh, analyze and present results uh, have been optimized. And that is going to pay significant dividends going down the road, as we can also potentially enter a clinical market worth upwards of 6 billion Swedish crowns as well. Right now, we define the market at about a billion for consumer tests. How does the test work? It's a fecal test. It's not sexy by any means. Uh, you send out uh, a kit, you take a fecal sample, it gets sent to us, we do an analysis and present the results. Um, and that's how it works. It's quite simple. Uh, what type of data can you collect? By bringing down the cost, you increase the amount of data you're collecting as well. And uh, because of GDPR regulations, you simply can't share any data. And this is my data, I think, over an 18-month period. And this is my journey of, of observing my gut health and taking an, uh, an elevated level of soluble fiber as well during that period. And I think that you can draw th three conclusions fundamentally from this data. It takes a long time to improve gut health. Gut health is extremely variable. So if you, for example, collect the data from one of these points and you thought it was representative of the overall trend, you could be fatally wrong. Therefore, you have to collect multiple data points over time. This also justifies the need or the rationale to develop a therapeutic product because there you have a stability issue as well. So there are three clear conclusions or takeaways uh, you can draw from this. How do we get our test to market? Uh, we try to be quite innovative here as well. Uh, we said uh, we could create an ecosystem and collect a lot of biometric data, or we can simply say, we are in a very good competitive position cost-wise. Let's let everyone use this. So we created a concept we call LinkGut, which is a white label service that allows any food and beverage and nutraceutical, even potentially a therapeutics company, to leverage this cost-effective ecosystem. Why not? Um, and why not do this also for healthcare professionals? So in, pharm in pharmacies, in hospitals. So our company is 50% biotech, but we're also 50% IT. We want to leverage the platform that we developed and customize it and build it for people to such an extent we can roll out a LinkUp partner about a week. Everything's modulized and we can roll that out. Uh, our first LinkUp partner was a UK company called True Food, and we launched this uh, in Q3, and then they're ramping up now in Q4 with marketing. 
And this is an example of it, uh, where we essentially build a, a backend, they have access to our ecosystem, they offer the test to their customers, and then they can validate their product. And in this case, it's a fiber-enriched product. So any type of product that is assisting in uh, reparation or improvement of gut health is a potential customer for this particular product. Now, since then, uh, we have signed several agreements uh, with a company in Sweden called Reviva Bio, and they're an example of a company working with uh, nutraceuticals, gut health nutraceuticals. They're not the only company in the world, but a very progressive company in this space, and they're interested in validating the effect of the products. Chewbase is an Austrian company. It's the first API example, so we, so we don't only have to extend the website, we can do an API and integrate our ecosystem into someone else's website. In this case, this is a website about allowing people to explore different foods. Uh, um, then we have development projects. Uh, the project with Food Marble is an example of, we know there's a, about a three-week delay from taking a test to doing a, a microbiome analysis and providing the results. What could happen if we shorten that to real time, with real-time diagnostics? And in this case, what we're doing is correlating hydrogen gas in a device, which you blow into, to the microbiome data. For an individual, standardizing the fiber. If we can do this, what we can do is bring real-time gut health measurement into fruition, which will be fantastic when we launch our therapeutics products, because it'll allow us to dose these products in real time as well. Gabriel Pharma is an example of a, quite a progressive pharmaceutical company that's interested in also looking at this ecosystem. And there we'll, be, we'll be running a, um, a pilot study in Q1 of next year. And again, there it's, can we utilize that pharmaceutical environment as a way to develop new business opportunities? As I said earlier, pharmacies are one example. We see this, this um, uh, uh, amalgamation or introduction of healthcare services in pharmacies, which I think is an interesting development. And that will happen as well in, in the hospital environments. If we look at sort of a summary of the company, where we are and where we're heading, um, the three different pillars we're operating in, so the uh, therapeutics, uh, the fiber, and the diagnostics. Uh, we have clear competitive advantages of, in, across all three, as well as IP. Uh, the markets are quite substantial, as well as they're growing, and I think we can unlock potentially two to three times the value in some of these markets by introducing variations of our products. And uh, in terms of business model, it's quite clear in both cases we have a royalty model, because we do have a platform technology. And in the last case, obviously, we're selling directly to consumers uh, through our partners as well. Uh, this is quite unusual. You know, companies of our size and our duration don't have three independent businesses such as, such as this. Each of these businesses could warrant the existence of a company, and we have them under one roof. And there's synergies between them. Uh, also interesting, and those who are interested in understanding the competitive playing field, you know, if you're interested, you can take a picture of this. These are the players in the field, uh, our reference points as well, in terms of valuation. Uh, and there are quite a number of them in each of these areas we're working within. Um, in terms of competitive advantages, we think we're in a very good position compared to these other companies. Uh, the low-cost platform we have will allow us to identify new uh, applications on the therapeutic side. And once the products are developed, we can uh, monitor and we can uh, dose these products in real time, as I said, especially if this works out with the Food Marvel technology. Uh, the metabolic focus is very important as well. Uh, we know things are moving away from the, maybe the diversity side and looking more at the metabolite side. And that allows us also to explore many, many different, different areas as well, uh, both as primary and uh, complementary or co-treatments. And then the business model, the fact that we have this open ecosystem mentality as well, that we want to share what we're doing with as many parties as possible, is going to contribute significant value and provides a, a competitive advantage. What activities drive value in the company? And again, I don't like to use the word triggers, but these are the things that are coming down the pipeline in terms of uh, news, obviously, uh, steps forward in the development of, uh, of different uh, therapeutic treatments. Uh, the partners we have as well, obviously, are going to impact that. And the fact that we explore other indication areas uh, represents the fact that we're going to be obviously building out or leveraging the platform uh, that we have. 
On the fiber side, obviously, things that are developing there are uh, steps forward in terms of IP, uh, demonstrating the efficacy of these particular products and obviously partners we bring into the mold as well. And on the last side, the diagnostic test, which we've demonstrated that we've been quite good at as well in terms of bringing in partners. Uh, so the number of partners, uh, the quality of the services we're providing, all these things provide value. Uh, and then I've listed a number of competitors there. And the reason for that's quite simple. Uh, I think if you're going to fairly value what we're doing, the fact that we're operating in three different verticals and the opportunity and the synergy created by working across those verticals, I think it's a worthwhile exercise to look at those companies and see what their market caps are. Because uh, our company, if you take everything into consideration, is about 1 50th <laughs> of the value of these equivalents in the market. So the, the, the journey ahead of us is quite interesting indeed. Uh, in the company right now, in the board, uh, about 40, 43% of all shares are locked up. And I think within a, a month period, about 160% of the f uh, free float has been um, traded, which is very interesting in indeed. Going forward, uh, obviously we've set up a, a number of goals in the company. Uh, and the first of those is obviously to validate the market interest in our link up concept. And I think Personally, I think we've already done that. Uh, the pipeline that we've communicated thus far looks very interesting. The pipeline that's coming looks extremely interesting as well. Uh, obviously, on the therapeutic development side, uh, we have to make steps forward, and therefore we have goals of completing all the preclinical work uh, by Q3 of next year, and then starting our clinical studies in the two indication areas by uh, Q4 of next year. Going forward, obviously, uh, we have to make strides for it, both on the diagnostic side, on, our, on the fiber side, and on the, on the uh, uh, indication side as well. And that's when we get into 2021 to 22 and 22 to 23 when we get into phase two and phase three studies. Uh, what's interesting for us is we're a company that's generating sales, sales from diagnostic services, and eventually we'll be generating sales from ingredient sales as well, uh, which is quite unusual. So essentially three companies under one roof, uh, at an early stage still, but in a very hot <laughs> area right now. So uh, saying that, I thank you for your attention and I welcome any discussion. Thank you. Tack så mycket. Det ska hända en hel del spännande saker i bolaget. Det visar den här sista sliden framåt i tid. Många målsättningar som ska infrias. Så det kan finnas alla anledningar att följa bolaget nära och se och hur det hela utvecklas. Frågor? Ja, vi har en fråga här. This uh, fiber of yours, is it uh, synthetic or natural fiber? It looked on, on your screen that it's from corn. Or yeah, what's that's the, Would you like to elaborate on the production side of it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a fiber that's derived from the brand of uh, corn which makes it extremely attractive because you have a, a lot of dry and wet corn milling facilities, ethanol production sites. So in terms of access to the fiber, it's pretty much unlimited. We've done some back of the napkin calculations and you could probably supply the entire global population with two times the daily recommended intake of soluble fiber with the supply that exists today. So it's a, a very low cost supply of this particular fiber, and therefore we spent a lot of effort in terms of getting a production process which is cost effective as well, because the price to market will be key in terms of getting key penetration in this particular market of uh, prebiotic soluble fibers. But the technology itself can be employed on any type of cereal grain, which makes it even more interesting. And do you have any patents or pending for this particular fiber? Absolutely, we, as I stated in, in, in uh, the slide, looking at the different verticals, we have IP in all three areas. So in terms of the fiber, uh, we have patents for the particular uh, axis molecule. Uh, we have the production process, and we have quite soon patents based upon the enzyme development work as well. So that's quite well protected. And again, if you look at the, the other companies in the industry, you're talking about quite large agro companies. <laughs> Um, so there are many opportunities there, both to partner with them, but also utilize them as distribution channels and, uh, yeah. But, Tack uh, för det, Kristoffer. Oh, 